I think we are exceedingly lucky because we have a yogi teacher. To feel how he makes one independent. I have a feeling that he is all, all the time present. Such an amazing example. He is, you know, so full of confidence and he instills that confidence in us. In the beginning when I first saw him, he frightened me, though I am not the type to be easily frightened. There's a big trust among the people. Whatever situation he's in, he shows absolute stability. And that, to me, is showing the qualities of the mind, the limitless nature of the mind. He's really here and now. I know no other person in the world who really has such a level of integrity of always doing and saying exactly the same thing. In my eyes, the realization that Lama Maole carries today, in my eyes, I saw it from the day one when I met him. It's beyond what normal people know or can do. One can do always more. He, in every moment, he shows what is beneficial for other beings. Somebody who gave us the meaning of life. The thing is that he's always happy. He must be an activity of the Kamapa, so I see him actually identical with Kamapa. He gives everything to make people happy. It is the way of identification. What he's done is just of inestimable value. It's his compassion and how tirelessly he works for us and, and the, joyful, the, the joyfulness that he expresses while he's doing it. Fearless! <laughs> <laughs> totally open mind. Remember that one morning I woke up and I was very happy. And it had no reason why I was happy. I was just happy like that. And then the thought came to my mind that thank you, Lama. Lama shows us the nature of mind and through melting and through identification then we hopefully mature and to discover that it's ours. I could really see the, the, the potential of mind. If we put the qualities of all of us together, I still think all I would have more. Never give up. I had ink immediately. I have total confidence in that man. The protection. I cannot spot one thing. The amount of his work. Mahakala. Hero. Perfection. Father. The best friend what you can have. Yes, now I also heard you ask the others about this question and I realized I became really nervous because <laughs> I didn't know what to answer this question at all. Yeah? So, but I realized it's because it's everything. It's not even one moment, it's like the whole life. I remember, I remember that one morning I woke up and I was very happy. And it had no reason why I was happy. The thought came to my mind that thank you, Lama. Through melting and through identification, we hopefully mature and to discover that it's ours. Lama shows us the nature of mind, the nature of mind. talk about one of his qualities which is supposed to be more important than the other quality or other qualities it is somehow limiting Sixties when Ole and Hannah the first time came to Rundtek and uh, yeah, he explained in detail how they looked and so on, like like hippies. He was looking to us uh, when we came and we were immediately totally fascinated and like we didn't know what happened really, but it was a strange scene. But we were just looking and 
kind of absorbing what was going on. Han and Ole were not the, the first Westerners who met the 16th Kamapa, but uh, with no other one, uh, the 16th Kamapa um, behaved uh, in a way like he behaved with Han and Ole. And uh, for example, he would uh, he would ask uh, where are they, and he would just want he wanted to know how they are, and uh, he wanted to have meetings with them in the morning, four o'clock, and so on. In the first moment, um, he actually gave us so many strong blessings that we could feel it so much that we it convinced us. Like we, it was, you can say miracles actually what he did, yeah. And uh, if he had not done it in that way, then I think we would not have followed him. Yeah, like also for Ole, it was not a normal thing to accept somebody like that as a teacher. You know, he was like, he and actually we both of us maybe I was I was not in the same way but we both were so convinced about that we actually <laughs> ourselves <laughs> without any help knew everything and probably knew it better than anybody else that we were in that kind of state you can say and the Kamapa was so strong in how he worked with us. For the monks, it was so unusual that they said, hey, listen, what, they asked him in a big meeting, what do you want from these, from these guys? And then he said, some of you, you might think we are refugees here now for some years, and then in China or in Tibet, everything will change again, and we can come back and everything will be like before. But I will tell you, it will never be before like, like it was before, never again. Buddhism is finished in Tibet. And then he said, and also some of you know that already, and you think we come now back to India, or we came back to India, and now Buddhism will flourish here like it flourished 2,000 years ago. But this will not happen either. Buddhism will never become big again here in India. Instead of it, he said, it will become big in the West, and this too, they will do it for me. Kamapa was very, very um, uh, pleased about uh, Lama Ole and Hana, and he was very close uh, to Lama Ole and Hana. So one had the feeling that yeah, the Kamapa had them close at his uh, heart. I met this uh, man in the beginning of January 1973, and by that first uh, meeting, he impressed me on some kind of how to say, human level, that he was some very physical person, which I was probably not, uh, definitely not, as a, he was, you know, he, he was doing this forehead to forehead thing, and, and he was such a strong man, and, and warm, and simply some person which I w myself would have, would like to be like that came into the door and I was so happy. I've never been happy in my life, really. I was incredible. I didn't know what, what was going on with me. Yeah? And he, he sat beside me and said, oh, what are you doing? And I'm Ole. And I said, oh, I'm Eric. And he told a little bit about the 16th Kamapa. And I was completely flashed. Yeah? The first thought was, I want to do something for him. It was really like coming back home something like that, like I knew this man or, or what he, what he represents. In my eyes, the realization that Lama Maole carries today, in my eyes, I saw it from the day one when I met him. There was no difference here, you know, he had it like that. And I picked up the phone, even though it was not my center, and somebody said, yeah, there's a car standing on the highway and they have no gas, can you help us? And I said, of course, I went to the highway and there was this car standing. And I opened the door and there was Ole laying, uh, sleeping. And Tomek was in the back, that was the first time I met Tomek too. And Ole was so happy to see and me. From then on, basically, we continued traveling until today. Yeah? When I was waiting for Ole, he actually came, he arrived late, two weeks late. 
were waiting for two weeks because they wouldn't <laughs> give him a visa. So sometimes people think, well, he came like 15 minutes late. When I met him, he came two weeks late. Uh, and and uh, the second time I met him, you know, meeting him, I had inc immediately, I have total confidence in that man, complete confidence. And why? Because, because what, what really, that he did not change at all. You know, from day one, he was always the same, always the same. And here, the second time, when he, where he came to Gdańsk in that communist Poland, which was like a jail, it was like a jail, I was organizing, uh, Maggie and I, my sister, we were organizing a lecture at the university, and the secret police came to us the day before and said, if that, if that Nudal, that's how they called him, says something political, you, both of you and your mother, will end up, will be arrested at once. You know, so strong words, and they meant it, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't a joke. And Ole arrived, he like touched me like, and he said, Tomek, everything will be all right, I promise you that. And you know, it was enough that he said that, I knew it. And we were going to the university, it was winter, cold, and, and, and the university surrounded by riot troops. You know, like this big Zoma, called Zoma, big lads from the countryside that they gave them amphetamine so they can beat people and enjoy it at the same time. And, and going through that, they even brought some water cannons. Yeah, and, and we entered this university hall and there were hundreds and hundreds of people. Not everybody wanted to be a Buddhist or hear, but everybody wanted to hear a message of hope from the free world. And really, and the, the hall exploded in applause, and, and people had tears in their eyes, thanking Ole that he came there. It was the first official meeting allowed in the then communist martial law state of war Poland. And Ole walked in, jumped on the table. I climbed on the table next to him. And you know, we could see the secret police in the, in the front rows. And then he started. You are, you are very lucky here in Poland. And the secret police goes, yes, 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 you are, we are very lucky. And I translated and I said, because obviously nothing functions in this country. And you know, and it was like, zzz, all of a sudden they all took their pens and you know, one more word all it says and then there'll be consequences. And I had so much confidence, you know, so much confidence. And I, I'm, I translate, I knew that it'll be fine. I completely didn't doubt. And it's, it's a good story to tell today, but it, it, was, it was dangerous. And I translated, because obviously nothing works here. And Ole continues, because you don't have the glitz and the destruction on the outside that we have in the West, having nothing on the outside you can focus on the inside. Focusing on the inside, you'll find permanent values and achieve permanent results. Congratulations. You know, and when he said that, even the secret police went there and said, yes, that's true. <laughs> we was one of the time in very high pass in the night, and night before or two days before, four Tibetan died cool because it was so cold it was maybe mi minus 40 or 45 or I don't know but very very cold and we need to make this pass and we make in about one o'clock or two o'clock in the night and when we was in the top the truck stopped and we go all down from the truck we start to push the truck and only in the truck is put in the sleeping bag inside there and looking, looking to, and I remember I said, Ole, please come down, help us to push the truck, if you know we die here, good. And Ole non react. And we sit in there and Ole, please come and we try Hannah, Kur, me, yes, or the Tibetan, try to push the truck and not possible to be free. So I said, oh, please, Ole, come down, help. And Ole very relaxed, go out from the sleeping bag, check the shoes, gone down, and in the moment, in the moment Ole touched, not even push nothing, touch the truck, 
we start to 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 dry. This really she was it was one moment it was between that or life because if you know moving five thousand five hundred meter high or maybe six thousand meter high we will die. Ah, the jailer, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Kamapa was invited again to open the new gompa of uh, Turku Ujin in Bauda. That means to to mm -hmm. be, uh, to go to uh, Kathmandu to open it to do the let's say. Um, initiation of it and at that time uh, he went by car from Guntek uh, to Kathmandu mm -hmm. and uh, so the place before you basically enter uh, Nepal which is very very steep place and um, and his dangerous road at that time Lama Ono was also driving one of the cars yeah? it was not the car uh, there, there was another car with the 16th Kamapa inside and Lama Ono was driving another car and then um, the brake didn't work so the brake did work but uh, uh, Lama Ola couldn't do much because there was also the car with the 16th Kamapa, so he couldn't even just go crash somewhere. So he somehow managed to, even though there was no brake and it was very steep, to kind of handle the car yeah, so that nothing happened. And uh, Rinpoche was there in, in yet another car, but he was also going on this track. And he, he remembers that all of them uh, then remembered that, oh, Lama Ola must is a very, very skilled driver. Yeah. So I have had some um, of oh, the, um, these experiences and others and, and uh, dreams and and it's usually the protector um, aspect of Ole that comes out st stronger than the rest. It was not like as if I was meeting, um, although I was very small, it was not like as if I was meeting somebody new. Uh, it was like as if I met, I knew this person, you know, and uh, I felt um, yeah, very much at ease. And then ever since, um, now um, we've, we've been meeting uh, continuously and I see his um, devotion never ceases to, uh, let's say, f for, the, for the activity of Dharma and as a result we have countless and countless of, uh, let's say, places to practice and meditate all over the world. I got a blessing from Ole and then I, I was looking at him surprised and said, wow, that feels so good, I want to have that every day. And Ole was laughing and said, yes, girl, then you have to meditate. Someone asked a very basic question and I was like, oh no, how can you ask this? And everyone was like, oh, you know, we've heard all this before. But Lama Ola was completely kind, completely patient, and he gave the answer right from the very beginning of Buddhism all the way up to Mahamudra in two minutes flat. Absolutely perfect and totally kind and exactly what this guy needed. And I was just sitting there like... I think his capacity to, to transform every situation to his best. So wherever he goes, whatever he, he touches, whatever he, whoever he speaks with, you know, it just changed the situation uh, to its best. To a friend who was standing in front of him and I'm sure the person has a feeling Lama Ola is here for him 100%. At the same time, I started a question. I was already asking uh, about my friend, but I didn't realize one more thing I was told afterwards. That at the same time, when I had the feeling Lama Ola is there for us, that the guy who was getting blessing had a completely feeling that Lama Ola is there for us. Ola had phone here, and he was at the same time, he was doing Pova for just recently deceased child. And actually since, since then I always thought we can do more. We, we can always, whenever I see Lama Ole and I think I start to become effective whenever I see him, I, I see how, how lazy I am. And he was just sitting there and waiting for us to come down and then he just saw a little dirt on the pillow and he started to, you know, take it off. And in this moment, maybe I shouldn't say that, but at this moment, it was really for me like uh, teaching that actually there is no difference between samsara and nirvana. Everything is just pure land. And because in this little detail, he showed me that everything is important because you can change everything to pure land, right? Yeah, we had this feeling that I think that happens in, on different levels. You just feel you know each other completely. Yeah? I remember once I was sitting uh, close to Lopin Chacho in Poche where we've been drinking tea and in one moment somebody said something about Lama Ola and Lopen Chechu stopped for a moment and he said 
there is no second one like him. <laughs> I asked him something and he gave an answer which did not fit to the question. And I thought, maybe he misunderstands me completely, uh, what, is, what is happening. And then I had a dream, a long dream, the whole night through. I was dreaming that I was discussing with him and talking about this question and trying to find a good solution. And at the end he said, yes, basically you are right, but I have meditated much longer than you. So that was the end of the discussion. <laughs> I came to this lecture and I've seen Ole in Rødby where hundreds of people were and then I come to Copenhagen and there's only 16 people at this lecture, uh, so that's a little strange. Anyway, Ole gave a lecture on the lineage and especially on the Kammerpass and he gave it like, there might as well have been 200 people, his, his, his uh, effort to, to pass on uh, everything he had about it, you know, he, he gave, he did. But then when he came to the explaining about his experiences with the 16 Kamapa, then suddenly this strong guy, this tears started just flowing out of his eyes. And, and you just realized this deep, deep thankfulness, devotion uh, he had to the 16 Kamapa, how, how powerful that was. Yeah? And it just, and he kept on talking. But then I reacted like I think any normal people. I ran over to him and I started cuddling him. Oh, he's always so okay. <laughs> and it was kind of nice for a few seconds. Then we both, oh, what is this? You know, men, do men behave? <coughs> 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 but then I got very really red in my face and I felt, oh, and, 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 and still, I, I, all the warmth in my heart uh, for Ole, because he showed uh, devotion, yeah, that it uh, without words so directly, and you just, you, I think I got, I got the meaning of that. Yeah. I was 17 at the time, and uh, what can I say? Before this meeting, then I had an impression always that I am the best. Yeah. Finally, um, after the meeting, I had another idea. <laughs> that maybe there is somebody who uh, has more compassion, more wisdom, more power, more joy, more sense of humor, more of all of the qualities uh, people definitely should have. So I decided that if I won't be learning from him, then I will be the last idiot uh, in the world. Yeah, this I didn't really want to be. It makes us to totally practical people also, which have their jobs and can live their life and and are the top ones in, in this society. At the station, he said, uh, when the border will be coming, I will be thinking of you. Okay, so, and <laughs> the border is approaching and suddenly I felt so nice. I really felt like absolutely happy. And I lay down on this bed, you know, and we had two Germans also in my compartment. And then this border officer is coming and he was very strict. And he looked at the Germans and he opened their passports and he was really checking things. The German, the passport, the German, the passport. Then, okay, then he looked at me and suddenly I see that he feels much better than me. You know, it was like, ah, oh. and he took my passport. And he opened my passport and he closed my Polish passport, you know, and then he, he gave it back to me. He didn't even, I could give him whatever, you know, my refuge card, whatever. Yeah? And um, then <laughs> it was even worse because I had all this hip, hippie wallet here, you know, hippie style, all everything mixed, you know, and somehow inside this passport there was the ticket from Moscow Metro, you know, and it fell down on the floor. When he was giving the passport, it fell down on the floor. And then the man, without even looking what it was, he was only looking at me. He was like, it was yours. And then he disappeared. <laughs> and then we went, it was just you know, a total magic what Ole does. Trying to cross the streets, you know, and this is the first time he arrives to Havana. So, of course, you've, you've been practicing for almost three years, waiting to meet him, yeah? And then finally you meet him, so you know you're in the city center, and of course there's a bit of traffic, and you have to cross the street. So 
for some reason, I don't know, I just, I just grab his hand and we're just about to cross the street. Yeah. <laughs> and I just look and I see, wow, that the many cars, one of these American old cars, yeah, full of steel, if they hit you, you really break you into two. <laughs> so I just see them approaching and they don't have proper brakes. So I thought for one second, okay, we should go. And then I, I thought again, no, maybe we should, we should wait. And the moment I thought maybe we should wait, I just felt I was pulled. And I, I saw myself in the middle of the street, I'm walking, you know, like, and Ole was just pulling me. And then we just get to the other side. And then he's not even looking at me, he's just looking straight because we're going to, to the Gompa, to the place where we're going to meditate and maybe meet the Sangha. And he's just telling me while he's looking forward. He said, oh, you know, if you want to cross, just cross. If you want to do it, do it now. <laughs> that, was, that was very nice. Because, you know, just to feel it, you know, it was a... A very quick uh, mind, yeah, a very, very sharp mind, able to catch you in between two thoughts, yeah. It was a poster in Sofia, in Bulgaria. And I looked at this guy, you know, with this haircut and everything, big smile. And I thought, this guy is amazing, but something's wrong. He's too happy, yeah, for my understanding, yeah. So this was the first encounter, let's say. So f later, I actually found out that, yes, it is possible to be that happy because I saw him over the years, you know. 20 years, how can you say which was the deepest of this? But I'm always very grateful that he is always there. No, mat no matter what happens, you know, he still talks to me. There is some somebody who is always there and I have nothing like that in my life beside that, so I cannot make one thing which was changing me around because I am keep on going and it's all because of him. We were discussing, discussing, discussing and I, it was right at the time when the Kuwait war was on and I was, I, for sure I was in the peace movement, I said, oh no war, no war, and he said, yes, it's very necessary and stuff, so we discussed, discussed it to the very early morning and step by step he, he showed me that there is a higher view possible. And so and this was much more functioning, much more yeah, enjoyable. And in the afternoon I met Ole and he's, you know, in a very circumstantial way, you know, in, in, right before his second lecture in, in El Salvador where we drove. And um, he hit me on the breast and said, hey, young hero, we've been stealing horses together in past lives. And for me it was like, really, what? <laughs> Anyway, I didn't understand what he meant, and then that night I had a dream which really, you know, showed me basically everything that would come. And um, I think this, this was the strongest experience I had with him, because it was basically everything that I needed, you know, to, to connect to this teacher. We have a nice evening, and Ole, while uh, drinking the, this wine, so he was presenting uh, the people, and he was praising the people. and. I was really like shocked how much he remembers, how much he can say about any, any, any of his students. And, and it took like two or three hours in the night. So he was like talking and talking and talking and talking so about each person who is, uh, who is sitting at the table. So, but actually half of this wine was like spoiled. They was like kept uh, in not in a proper way or maybe something happened. Something warm was from the beginning. So, and then in the morning, so uh, most of the people were like really like uh, lying dead with a strong headache. And only at 11, I managed to like awake and stand up. And then I, I went to, to see what's happening in Ole's room. So, and, but, Everybody was so like tired and so still like uh, in the best shape that nobody uh, came to to prepare breakfast and just and only was sitting there alone so and writing his manuscripts so and checking the letters and doing everything so and then uh, and I, and I really was asking so uh, Ole doesn't don't you have a headache. So because my my like uh, head was falling apart, and all he said yes, of course. So but can how can you like work? He said that 
something uh, always something happens with, with their heads. So all, all, always suddenly body making problems. Sometimes it, 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 there is a headache. Sometimes you are weak. Sometimes you, you, are, you are sick. But the work doesn't wait. We go through the travel on the on the roads, you know, and take the cars everywhere and stop at these gas stations. And before my experience had been. You know, okay, this is sort of a sad environment, or who likes to be at a gas station? I had like, a, like a not such a high view of this situation, and then we went to gas, you know, driving with Ole, go to a gas station, and he makes everyone a king or a queen the moment he walks in, and it really, anytime I can observe Ole in action, and I can see like what a bodhisattva is in life. What he shows is this playful activity that you can have a very clear image how things should develop at the same time having all the space, the compassion, the wisdom and nothing is fixed. There's always a space behind and I really wish very much that uh, being able, like the Lama, in every moment to feel what is the right thing to do, to cut through, to having compassion, everything at the same time. And uh, in my a lifetime and I have so many years when I met the Lama, I really, there's one moment where you think, oh, I know what he means or ah, it's very clear. And at the moment it's more like I feel there is much more space behind and so many things to learn and I really want to jump into this space, to just let go and trust the moment. I came with Tomek on a motorbike quite late at night, yeah. And they were really tired. Huh? We had to help them down the motorbike. And they were some really stumbling yeah? and we all went to the room and we got a beer and Tomek was about to sleep and then Ole said to him, Tomek, don't get lazy. <laughs> and we talked about Ole's activity and um, it was just, you know, how many centers he founded and how close he is to people and so on. And then come up and said, yes, yes, that's very unique. There is no other Lama like Lama Ole, he said, who is doing it in that way. And that's why he has to live very long. May you live really long. That his activity goes on and on and on and that he keeps on benefit with countless of beings as he does now. Many, many more years, of course. Deep, deep thankfulness. For, for everything that he gives us all the time. Assured us that he will live longer. May you always have students who can hold your style. Every day when we finish meditation, say, okay, may he live long enough that the biggest amount of being may be benefited. That all your wishes for beings come true. I wish that he gets all his wishes fulfilled. We always will be together, benefiting all beings. That we will really be strong and that we will be together, all of us. Please stay long. Touches as many people as possible. We'll go on for many, many years. And we promise to work together as friends and to the best of our ability. Of course. Many more years with him have to be able to continue your job. Lineage will stay forever. And that your activity spreads all over the world. Long, long life. I wish, I hope the same as you do, so that we can keep our societies free, so that we can preserve these, these precious teachings. And we all, you know, accomplish the, the nature of mind. As many students can become, become like him as possible. I wish him 25th and 26th hour in the in the, in the day, yeah? so more time uh, for, for what he's doing now. Yeah, for it. May it go on and on and on. For Lama, it is it is some perverted way, but it is for us because when Lama is liberated or enlightened, Lama doesn't need anything. That's what we need. It is 
uh, his long life because he can help us. <laughs> and, and we shouldn't forget that, that in, enlightenment and liberation is so perfect that when we get it, we don't need anything more. But the most important space is, um, as I said in the beginning, our, our bond, our togetherness. And uh, it is our practice, it is our uh, motivation that uh, keeps us all together and um, uh, makes us grow. So yeah, it's uh, lovely. It's everywhere it's the same, whether I'm in Europe or any part of uh, the world here. You know, I always see our um, inspirations working together. I'm sure we, we can. Uh, um, transform the world. I was very impressed. Uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. moment. Okay. Was ist kürzlich schon wieder auf Englisch? Was? Kürzlich, das Wort mit C. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Okay. Transmission is very important for us in our lineage. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> And then he said to me, I went back a little later, he went on explaining how Karaba had told him to, <coughs> to go to the West and start teaching there. And he said, <coughs> I, I don't really, I was, a sh you know, I didn't think I should do that, you know, I was completely, how can I do it? And, but anyway, it was Karaba's wish, so of course I, I, I did it, but it was unexpected. He thought Anna and him should stay. In, in, out in the east and just meditate around Kamapa. And he said, well, then I did, and it, it, uh, it found out that the transmission worked, that the things Kamapa had, had put there, it, 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 it did actually you know, function. And then he looked at me and he said, uh, and you'll do the same. I, mean, I was already red in the face, yeah? Second time I meet him and said, what? No, no way, man, I'm not gonna <laughs> do what you're doing here. You know? I don't know, yeah, you will. Thank you.